Hello beautiful soul, welcome to my channel. My name is Joanna. If you are new to this channel, I hope you stay. I hope you find something interesting in this channel that I will be channeling. And um, if you are new to this or to Joanna, um, my greatest joy or one of my greatest joys is to channel information that helps us all evolve to a higher vibrating human beings. And with that comes an understanding of knowing ourselves. So in my practice, this is what I help people with, is to know themselves. Because when you truly know yourself, you are in a position to reclaim your power. And over 95% of everything that we do say, think and believe is in the unconscious part of our beings, our being, which means we are not consciously aware of it. And therefore, if there is no awareness, if there's no consciousness of it, it cannot be shifted, changed, or addressed, or fixed, as some people would call it, though I prefer not to use the word fixed because I always say, there is no fixing required because we are not broken. Uh, do we have situations that make us feel like we're broken? Yes, but fundamentally we are not broken. So um, if you often say to yourself, I need to fix myself, there is no need to fix you. All you have to do is become more conscious of what and how you understand you and the world around you. So I do hope you find this helpful. Uh, if you do, I would love for you to click uh, the subscribe button. It tells people that there is some worthwhile information. Um, hit the like button if you so choose and maybe share it with a friend or two who you feel may benefit from this, from this, this transmission. And this is essentially all about helping us all connect to our higher power or to yeah, to our higher power, the aspect of ourselves we often know very little about. So thank you for being here. Uh, for those of you who are returning, again, thank you so much for being here. Without you, there would be no need for me to do this, and I absolutely love what I do. I absolutely love channeling. Um, it is one of very few things in my life that brings me to a sense of feeling complete when I tune into this higher vibration and everything just seems to be flowing. So thank you for that. Um, it is largely thanks to you that I get to do this and for that I'm internally, internally grateful. Um, if you've known me for a while, you know I'm not an astrologer. For those of you who don't know me, I'm not an astrologer. However, I have been learning um, things about astrology, not even because I'm consciously wanting to learn, it's just information comes to me and then I corroborate and it's like, oh, it's true. And um, we have just entered a Scorpio season. And when I asked this morning, what are we going to talk about today? I heard was talk about the way you have been feeling. So I will share with you how I've been feeling for the last last few days in particular. And we just had the new moon on the um, 4th of uh, November. We have two massive eclipses coming up. I believe one is in November 19th and the other one is December 4th. And those eclipses are going to help us pave way for the next years to come. Uh, incidentally, there is a webinar that I'm holding with an intuitive astrologer and we will be intuitively channeling information with regards to what to expect for 2022. Um, globally, 
collectively and for each individual sign. So if you are interested in that, um, there will be link posted down below. Uh, if you are also um, a subscriber to my newsletter, um, which you can find on my channel, which is also down below, you will be notified. I will be sending emails. Um, I have a feeling that this webinar is going to sell out very fast. Um, so if that's something that interests you, by all means. Uh, there are other webinars that are coming up. One is on the 18th of November, which is about healing our relationships. So it's right day before the eclipse. So if you are having challenges with relationships or understanding your own relationship with yourself or even knowing, having um, uh, questions or what does it mean to have a relationship with myself? Uh, you might find that interesting because shedding light on your relationship with yourself will help you understand your relationships with others and the world at large. And therefore, if there are aspects of you that you are not that are limiting you, becoming aware of that allows you the opportunity to change. And because the eclipse is right the next following day, depending on your location, uh, having that awareness amplifies your ability to move from that conditioned, limited consciousness. So if that's of interest to you, there is a link down below and there will also be a Q&A at the end. Um, back to how I was feeling. Yes, so we started Scorpio season and um, my understanding of a Scorpio season is that it is all about um, our sense of identity or sense of self. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? And I actually just looked that up like five minutes before I turned on the camera. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Because this is, this is, exactly what I have been feeling. So how have I been feeling? I have been feeling out of sorts. What does it mean? It's a sense of knowing who I am, where I'm going, where I'm going and where I belong. Though there is this strange, I don't even know how to explain it. There's a strange familiarity with it. I'm sure I've experienced this before. But at the same time, there is a weird comfort level with it. So even though I am feeling out of sorts and that feeling is uncomfortable, I strangely feel comfortable with the uncomfortable feeling. And that is something very new to me. Because generally when we feel something uncomfortable, we push against it, we resist it, we wanna get rid of it, we wanna fix it, we want nothing to do with it. And by doing so, we are creating more pressure, more resistance, internal pressure for sure, which amplifies the feelings of discomfort. So what I am beginning to see is that I am learning how to embrace this journey of expansion and expansion is very uncomfortable. Because to expand means we have to let go of whatever has kept, up, kept us small. What that means is that aspects of myself are leaving me or transitioning or shifting or transforming into something new. And I'm trying to find the right words and I'm very aware that I can't quite succinctly say what I really feel, but I am doing the best I can with the words that I have at my disposal. And I'm hoping that it's gonna land for some of you. And of course, the reason, the very reason why I'm saying this about me, because if you are watching this, you either have been feeling this, you are feeling it right now, or you will be feeling it very shortly. Because the reality is that 92% of you which is a lar large number, listening to this are on your own spiritual journey of unfoldment. Uh, some people will be looking for messages about the future. That's, that's not what I do, although things do come up for sure, but that's not my focus. That's not where the effort goes. So let's talk about this discomfort. I asked the question, tell me, what is this discomfort about for most people? What is the 
general feel of this discomfort? What is this thing that I'm feeling that uncomfortable with? And one of the things that came up was that we are in the process of being birthed. It is uh, a metaphor, of course. And what does it mean to be birthed? It means that we are in the process of transformation, transition. And if you've had children or if you uh, witnessed anyone having children, giving birth is for the most part extremely uncomfortable. But here's the thing, there is no going back. Once the birth process begins, which starts at conception, you can't back out. Uh, I mean, of course, some things can happen. I'm not gonna talk about those things, but the idea here is when you're about to give birth, there's no going back. You can't just push the baby back and say, no, no, come, go where you came from. It has to happen, which means Resisting or fighting the discomfort doesn't really do much help. And we don't, I feel, consciously resist it for the most part. I mean, some, yes, maybe, but for the most part, I don't think it's conscious resistance. I think it's just, I feel it's just a natural way of trying to avoid something that doesn't feel particularly great. Now, of course, just like with birth just because something is uncomfortable and often extraordinarily painful. A miracle is happening. Another being is being birthed into this earth. And this of course is also a metaphor. You are in the process of being birthed. A new version is being birthed into the world, a new sense of identity, which is what you think about yourself, who you think you are, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive the world. And we are being helped greatly um, by those who are supporting us from the other side, from other dimensions. I mean, if you are watching this channel, you know that there is more to you than your physical body. There is other beings out in the universe. We humans cannot be the only ones because if we are, we're very, it's very sad. <laughs> so there are vast, vast, vast numbers of beings and different dimensions that are of much higher vibrations than we are. And therefore with higher vibrations, there's a greater understanding of the universe, of the world, and even of us as human beings. And the vision I get is a fish bowl, and there's a fish in the bowl. And the fish just knows that it's in the bowl, so it's just swimming, that's its world. But outside of the bowl, there's all these being watching and listening and see everything, every corner, every turn. But the fish can't see it. So the fish believes, well, I'm the only one in my universe but the fish's universe is very, very small. Just like our universe is very small, just like your understanding of yourself is very small. You couldn't possibly have all the understanding of who you are beyond the human being because vibrationally speaking, your body would combust its energy. So if you have been feeling uncomfortable Pat yourself on the back. It means you're doing something right. It means you are consciously or otherwise allowing yourself to grow and expand, which means you are growing, you are evolving, you are transforming into a greater version of yourself. And that is not a small thing. And here's why. Many people want to change. In fact, I want to change, I want to change. Yes, help me change, yes, change, change, I want to change. But the moment we begin to implement what we know into our life, which is where the change happens, many people just 
butt out. I said, no, nope, no, nope, not doing this too hard. Because to embrace feeling uncomfortable and knowing that you're not quite sure where this is going to lead you, but what choice do you have? You are evolving, which means if you're evolving, you are expanding. So naturally, an expansion leads to something greater than what is. That's all you have to remember. The more you resist the transition, the more you resist the change, the greater level of pain and discomfort you will feel. So if you're going to feel discomfort anyway, you might as well just embrace the discomfort that it ultimately leads you to something much greater. Okay. A subject that I want to touch upon is the idea of self-sacrifice. I asked, what is the theme that we might want to pay attention to? And it's the idea of sacrifice. And the idea of sacrifice can sometimes be very noble. But oftentimes it's a cover for something else within ourselves that is rooted in lack in terms of self-worth and your own identity. And the words I heard was saving humanity, saving humanity, saving humanity. I don't know who this message is for, but if you are someone or you know someone who sacrifices their own sense of who they are, their own needs, their own integrity in order to save the world, then if it's you, you might want to ask yourself, what does saving the world give me at the end of the day? Because If we self-sacrifice and we go against our own integrity in order to save somebody or in order to save many people, then that means that we are fundamentally being fed our own sense of worth and value purely by helping other people, which means we all help people in some ways every day and in different, in different ways, of course. So I'm not saying don't help people. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, for example, the idea of martyr. I always have a hard time saying this word, martyr. Martyr, M-Y-R-T-E-R, I believe it's spelled. Um, someone who has a tendency towards that is oftentimes overcompensating for something they are internally lacking. However, it's not that they're lacking it, it's their perception of themselves that tells them they're lacking. And that always comes down to or goes down to a limiting belief, which comes from experiences, generally speaking. Okay, from observation, experiences. So ask yourself, is there anything in your life, in terms of your own integrity, your own needs that you are sacrificing for other people. And again, I want to be very clear about this. This is not about needing to sacrifice something in order to gain something in the end and it's all great and wonderful and then it's back to balance. I'm talking in a way that eventually leaves us feeling very unbalanced within ourselves because we tend to overgive, 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 but we don't replenish. So it's often giving, 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 but not receiving. So notice if that's a theme for you. I was trying to think, where did I, where do I have a tendency to do that? And it's been a lifelong journey for me to um, stunt or um, suppress my own voice, how I feel, what I need, so that I wouldn't upset other people, so that I wouldn't inconvenience other people, so that they wouldn't think less of me which ultimately leads to their whole idea of rejection and not being good enough. And just recently, I've mentioned this in the last video, I had to kind of go, okay, we can't do this anymore, Joanna. This is not serving you anymore. You have to be honest and true, even if it means that this other person may not like it. Uh, 
and um, it was hard. And I've seen quite a few of you commenting on this. You are in similar situations. But at the end of the day, it felt like I have unhooked unself from something that was ultimately keeping me stuck in a certain vibration, in a certain frame of mind, in a certain way of seeing myself. And I decided that I will no longer do that because if I do, then I cannot experience something that's different. I will always, always end up experiencing something that is aligned with this particular vibration, which was a vibration of lack. And we all hold that within us to some degree, and it's layers and layers and layers and layers. I mean, I talk to clients pretty much every day. And one of the common, common comments is that I've worked on this, I thought I was done with it, and I guess I am not. And I always say, it's layers. When you heal one layer, a deeper layer comes up in order to be healed. But what I've noticed is the more we heal our layers, heal our layers, uh, the less likelihood there is for us to go back and repeating the same patterns, number one, but number two, when these situations arise or these layers arise, they become rather visible rather very quickly. And it almost takes less effort to deal with it. Perhaps it's practice, perhaps it's we've done it before, I don't know what it is. Or perhaps, thank you, maybe it's less charged. Perhaps it's less charged. So if you've dealt with something, but it's coming up for you again, or if you thought you dealt with something, but it's coming up for you again, it doesn't mean that you have not done any work. It simply means you are entering another layer. And I always say, there is no end to our journey. Our journey here ends when we say goodbye to our physical body. So there's always going to be something to some extent. It's a, life, it's a lifelong journey, lifelong journey. Um, another aspect I wanna talk about is the idea of rejection, rejecting our emotions. When we reject how, he, how we feel, we essentially reject what is our truth. I talk about truth a lot. It's one of my favorite subject. Truth essentially is something that we wholeheartedly believe in. We hold on to as our real. And emotions are connected to that. So if you are feeling, for example, insecure, but you keep telling yourself, oh, it's no big deal, oh, it's no big deal, or somehow you just keep shoving it aside, then what you are doing is you are basically delaying the inevitable, which is to finally facing it so that you can go through it and come out on the other side. At the same breath, you are also resisting it. And we often do this, I mean, I do this, when something comes up and I feel this block in my throat, it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to feel it. Um, but I've learned that it's not a good idea to do that because all I do is just shove it right down and it uh, creates more havoc in my own energy. So notice where in your life you reject your feelings or emotions. You pretend not to see, you pretend not to feel, you pretend not to be aware, you pretend to um, see something other than what it is, other than what is. And there's no judgment with it, by the way. I always say there's no judgment. There's no God at the end of the road that's going to say, you've done a bad thing. That's no, that's, that's not how it works. Uh, you're going to be your own judge <laughs> and you're going to go, oh, 
Okay, I guess I'll have to do it again. Of course, I'm interjecting a little bit of humor here because humor is energy and it's lighter. And we are going through some difficult times, some more than others. So this is a time to not reject how you feel, not deny how you feel, not pretend that you don't feel what you feel, because all that does is enhances or amplifies the resistance. And my understanding is, and I have read this, that it is in the resistance that we experience pain and the greatest discomfort. Okay. And I'm not saying it's easy. Don't misunderstand me. It's not, none of it is easy. It's not easy to face something you're not comfortable with. It's not easy to face something you want to deny. It's not easy to face something that you are not happy about. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. But at the end of the day, those are all our inner shadows or shadow selves that we are here to hopefully transform into the light. Okay. What is a shadow? A shadow is an aspect of you uh, whose light is blocked. For some reason, something is blocking the light. So some part of you is blocking the light, light being awareness. And that is always, always tied to our own uh, psychological limitations. It's the limitations of our mind, which stem from experiences. What would it take for you to be true to yourself? And I'm not suggesting you're not true to yourself, but you know, some of us, uh, or I, I would say most of us at some point in our, in our lives, um, are not being true to ourselves for many reasons. We want to belong, we want to be loved, we want to be accepted, all of these things. We don't want to be rejected. And all, all that's valid and it's wonderful. We all need that. But that doesn't enhance our ability to grow and expand. It actually makes it less so. So ask yourself, where am I not being honest with myself? Is there a situation in your life where you're not being honest or you're not wanting to see I feel like I have to explain it further. If there is something in your life that you want to enhance, you want to make better, you might want to make bigger, you want to make happier, whatever that is, enhance. What part do you currently play in it? In other words, the situation that you want to enhance, what part do you play in it for it to be the way it is? Okay. Now, not you guys, but some people out there would say, well, it's not me, it's somebody else. It's the world that makes this for me or to me. In other words, life happens to me. Well, that's not necessarily the case. We make life happen. That's our part, and the universe contributes. That's the universe's part. So there's always a level of responsibility we have into whatever it is that we are experiencing. It just is. We don't always look at it that way. We often don't want to look at it that way because it's easier to say it's them versus me. But if that's the case, this is a perfect example of denial of what is.
And again, notice I'm smiling because there's no judgment. There's no judgment here, none whatsoever. We do, we humans do this all the time. Part of it is learned behavior and it's just the way it is. But at the end of the day, everything serves a purpose. And if you have been practicing self-denial, then that has been part of your journey. And perhaps it's now, now time to, I wanna say grow out of it. Move beyond that understanding of yourself or the understanding of you have, of that you have in terms of how the world works, how the universe works. If you allow yourself to take responsibility for your happiness and engage in creating that happiness, your part, making, putting, putting, how do I say this? Doing your part in creating your happiness or whatever it is that you want to make greater, then the universe is always going to meet you halfway. Example, I hear the words independence. So for some of you, this is going to be about independence. Not necessarily physical independence. I want to say more emotional independence. When we wholeheartedly be um, um, rely on other people or situations, which usually involves other people, um, not always, but usually, uh, in order to make us feel good about ourselves. And I always say the environment always contributes 100%. But if our entire identity lies on the outside, then the moment an outside is taken away, then we are left with what? Nothing again. So in terms of emotionality and independence, ask yourself, how do I sacrifice myself or my own needs in order to help others, support others, make others feel happy, while at the same time, I am ignoring my own needs. Because again, this is not about not helping other people or helping them be happier, no. But it's about the idea of sacrificing yourself. And the emotional component plays a big part because if that is what we do, we um, basically give the responsibility of our emotions or how we feel to other people. And then they become responsible for how we feel. Except they don't, they can't. I can't be responsible for how you feel. My feeling comes out of me. Can the universe trigger me certain ways? Yes, but the feeling comes from me. So ask yourself, are you emotionally dependent on other people? To the point where your entire focus or majority of your focus goes to the outside. And that is how you're fed in order to feel good about yourself. And again, I'm not saying get rid of it all completely, no. But there has to be a bit more balance. So what's the antidote to this? First of all, is to recognize that that is the case. Because without recognition or awareness, nothing can be done, no change can take place. Okay? So just become aware. Am I too dependent on other people? For example, one of my um, themes is um, independence, and um, which is the opposite shadow self is codependence. So my one of my codependencies has been um, the reliance on what people think of me. And that is tied to rejection and abandonment. So for my entire life, up until very recently, um, 
I put a lot of focus and effort and value of what other people say or think of me. And I know many of you will recognize that. I speak to many of you every day as my clients. And you experience the same thing, but it makes sense because we are vibrating on a similar energy, so it only makes sense that we will resonate with each other. But the idea here is that during these times of Scorpio season, the eclipses and the profound energies that we are experiencing, we are able to finally let go of that. And this brings me back to what I was talking about at the very beginning, the discomfort. And here's why. If you've always relied on your internal mechanism that says other people say this and therefore you feel good, or if they say that and you don't feel good, and then all of a sudden that mechanism becomes, becomes transformed or it's starting to transform, it means that whatever you've always relied on is now being taken away. I'll use the words taken away. So your sense of safety and stability is being undermined. So when I say that I feel out of sorts, that part of me that has heavily relied on other people somehow is transitioning out. And it literally feels like it's leaving me. It's an, it's an energetic feeling like it's leaving me. And there's a part of me that wants to hold on and attach to it, but I, I, I'm doing my best not to because I don't want that anymore. And I know that this was, this was instigated by the situation that I faced a couple of weeks ago or a week ago or so, where I unhooked myself. And that, um, that feels uncomfortable. It kind of makes me feel a little bit, literally out of sorts. So if you are feeling out of sorts right now, accept it, embrace it. You may not even be consciously aware of what that is for you. Sometimes I don't know what it is. And sometimes I, sometimes I actually don't know how I feel. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know how I feel. I can't quite put a finger on it. it feels like it's a mishmash mish, mish, mish of a um, whole bunch of feelings and emotions all bunched up in one. So I just make a conscious effort to say, okay, all right, okay. I'm not supposed to figure this out logically. I'm just supposed to embrace this feeling and by embracing this feeling I'm not resisting it which means eventually it's just going to be on its way out okay. discomfort is not pleasant I mean certain discomfort is pleasant like you go to a massage for example and it's uncomfortable and then you feel amazing but at the moment of the discomfort it's not very pleasant but if we look at discomfort as the process of transitioning from the old to the new, the type of new that's much more positive and expanded and elated is the word I want to use, then it will help us to feel a little bit more at peace with it. So you'll notice the title of this transmission is Are You Feeling Uncomfortable? Let the discomfort be your friend. Now that's that's new. That's an interesting one. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. Commitment to yourself, to your own spirituality. What does that mean? Essentially commitment to you. You are a spirit embodying a physical body. You are both. Um... By spirit, I mean, I do not mean it in a religious way. I mean it in a, in a, in a way of 
energy. Okay. Spirit is energy. It's vibration. And this is a time of looking deeper into yourself. To know yourself more. To see yourself more. And as a result, to become more, to embody being more. And that takes a certain level of commitment. It takes a certain level of courage. It takes a certain level of persistence. It takes a certain level of patience. And there's many other things that don't come to mind right now. But those are the qualities that we need to embody in order to become greater versions of ourselves. Higher vibrating versions of ourselves, higher vibrating human beings. I'm being shown uh, a brain and this brain has this halo and all of a sudden this halo is expanding and this is my metaphor for expanding our mind beyond the physical beyond the logical beyond the human structure and in this expansiveness is where our potential is. The expansiveness is not in our logical mind because our logical mind is very limited, very tiny, 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 tiny. It's beyond our logical mind. Now, it doesn't mean intellect is not good, of course. I mean, I have to use my intellect in order to trans translate the images and the feelings that come through me I need vocabulary to do that and for that I need to use my logical mind I also have to use my discernment to choose carefully the words that I use in order to adequately project what it is that I am being shown to give to you so that it touches you exactly in the right spot like a penny I heard the question, if you love yourself more today than you did yesterday, then you've made progress. What does that mean? And of course, today and yesterday is a metaphor. Today versus some time ago. What does that mean? If you have learned to accept aspects of yourself that you haven't before, then you are expanding. If you have learned to recognize aspects of yourself that you haven't before, then you are expanding. If you have allowed yourself to learn more about who you are beyond your current perception, then you are expanding. If you are listening to this and you are open to the information that's coming, I'm not saying adopt it as your truth, not at all. I never want you to do that. But if you're open to receiving and seeing how it lands on you or resonates with you, then you are expanding. And in essence, that's what it means to love yourself. It's to allow yourself to be, to be more than you currently are today. Because there is so much more to you than what you can see. There is so much more to you than what you can hear, what you can feel, what you think, what you believe, certainly, what your truth is. You are so much more than that. If you were to imagine an expanded version of yourself. 
And when I say expanded, I don't mean physically. I mean, if that's your thing, for sure. But I mean expanded in terms of awareness. If you could visualize or imagine that that you, that expanded you, and if you were to communicate with that aspect of you, what would you see about yourself? What would you see about the expanded you that you are not able to see right now in the limited you? And those are the tools that we can use to start expanding our consciousness. Because at the end of the day, everything we ever want, everything we ever want to experience, it's all around us. It's all, it's all in energy. It's just a matter of tapping into it or expanding into it or connecting to it. And it's all vibrational. It's all vibrational. So if you deny how you feel, you are reducing the vibration of your that you're lowering your vibration, you're suppressing your vibration. If you are denying yourself your truth, if you are sacrificing in order to be loved, be liked, you are suppressing your own energy. And that creates a lot of resistance. And resistance, as I've mentioned, creates discomfort and pain. I feel like I'm done with this transmission. I want to pull three cards. I wasn't going to do them, but I'm going to pull three cards and just see what you're drawn to, what message there might be for you. Um, let's do this. So I'm going to use these cards here. Okay. Um, Colette Reed, uh, Wisdom of the Oracle. And these will be just very quick messages, whatever you're drawn to. For message number one. I feel like you don't want to be seen. You do not want people to look at you. Um, generally, when we don't want people to look at us, it's because we believe that they're going to see something within us that we don't like, that we feel is inferior, or that we feel we are lacking. Okay. If that's the case, do yourself a favor and ask yourself or recognize what it is that you believe that you're lacking. Because you're not lacking in anything. What you're lacking is your perception. Your perception is lacking. Your perception of you is lacking. You have a lack perception. So if you perceive yourself as lack, that's your perception. It's not truth. It's your truth, but it's not the truth. You're an infinite being, remember? You're a powerful, infinite being. Never forget that. The first card is fork in the road. You are at crossroads. You are being asked to choose and decide where are you gonna go? Which way are you gonna go? The red here, I don't know what it's called. To me, it symbolizes um, safety and security. And I never noticed this little owl here. Never noticed that before. That is wisdom. But what's interesting is this owl is looking in the opposite direction as this animal. Maybe it's, I think it's a reindeer. Um, 
So, because I keep hearing the word physicality, you might be tempted to take a familiar road. However, I'm going to say this. I would... Um, I don't know what word I want to use. I would say, mm, be mindful that when you take a familiar road, you will generally experience the familiar, which is fine if that is what you want. However, if you want something different, then taking the familiar is not going to take you there. It's not the path. Instead, you might want to ask the owl, which is the wisdom. And I keep hearing security, security, security. Do you do, you do things purely because of fear of not being secure? Do you accept things that are not in accordance to your integrity <clears throat> because somehow you feel this is going to give you the greatest security and sometimes we have to sacrifice things in order to make us make us feel secure yes but if what i'm talking about is developing inner security because yes of course the outside plays a huge part but it also has to come from the inside it has to be both it has to be both. If you accept partners or jobs or situations because you don't think you could do better, even though those situations are not ideal for what you want, then perhaps this is your time to make a change. And the change is not so much in how you do things, yes. But most importantly, it's change of how you see yourself because the moment you shift how you see yourself, you will shift and change how you do things. And then the universe will compliment you. And what I mean that, it's not that it's gonna give you a compliment. I mean, yes, that could be it, but it'll compliment It'll bring situations that complement your new awareness. Okay, I want to say in this message, don't be tempted to go to your past or to go to the familiar route unless it is what you want to experience. Okay. 13 is the devil, I believe. It's attachments. And one is new beginning, three is expansiveness, one and three is four, which is for me personally, a message of solidifying brand new structures and brand new commitments, not only with the outside world, but with commitment with yourself. By the book, in reverse, all I hear here is stop following your old patterns. Unless they're working for you, of course, but we're not talking about that. We're talking here about moving past our limitations. So if your pattern is to accept things that are less than what you really want, and you keep doing it, but you're not, you're not doing the work that allows you to, to bring forward better situations which require internal internal work um, then following old patterns is not going to get you what you want and pattern recognition is one of my uh, I would say strengths I mean I see I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit like an x-ray I can see things in people um, which can be a blessing and a curse, but it is a blessing, of course. Everything is double-edged sword. So that's what I'm gonna say for pile number one, or message number one. Okay. 
I'm gonna put the cards back, although they shouldn't come back again, but if they do, well, who knows? Okay, message number two. You might be feeling like fish out of water. I don't even know exactly what that metaphor means, but it certainly is uncomfortable. You are feeling out of your, <laughs> you are feeling out of your element or you might be feeling out of your element, or you might be, yeah, you might be feeling out of your element. Not, not, uh, not different than what I've explained at the very beginning of this, of this video. You will settle into it. I feel you are in new surroundings. This could be physically, you might find yourself in a new, in new surroundings, new people, new environment. Uh, it feels very, it feels new. It feels very new. Uh, and I can feel it. It's uncomfortable. It's slightly unnerving. It's jarring. It's uh, not, it's like, it's, I, I feel like I just want to uh, climb up into a shell, but I'm not going to do that. I just have to face it. So that is absolutely a discomfort. Water out of fish, like, uh, like fish out of water. <laughs> water out of fish. <laughs> um, be patient with yourself. What you're experiencing is a whole bunch of new feelings as well. Um, recognize your patterns because being in this new environment affords an opportunity to experience new experiences as long as you don't follow your old patterns, the ones that are limiting, of course, okay? The reason why I la asked, laughed because the card of cleanup came up. So this is a pretty straightforward message. It's time to clean up. Um, no time like the present. You are also in a position where you can see things from a much higher perspective than you have ever seen before. And though, so yes, much higher perspective than you've ever felt before. However, it may be a little bit uncomfortable, okay? Um, don't let the discomfort scare you, okay? Remember the idea of giving birth it's very uncomfortable, to say the least. But uh, a miracle is happening at that very moment. Okay. Two and one. Two is... I hear collaborations, actually. So that's interesting. You might be starting or... Yeah, you might be starting collaborations or you might be approached to collaborate or you may approach someone to collaborate. And there is a feeling of unity here. So collaborate could be at work, it could be with a friend. Uh, collaboration is the work that I get, the word that I get. Um, of course, three is expansion. Again, that's the uh, Empress Tarot, which is abundance, newness, birth, so similar, birth. One is about new beginnings. And um, for some of you, I feel like you're on a fast train to some destination. And this doesn't necessarily have to feel be a physical destination. It could be, but I don't sense that's the case for most of you. It is uh, mental emotional it's you're moving into a different space perhaps it's the space beyond your current understanding of yourself right now this is all about commitment to yourself all of this now is about committing to ourselves having said that i'm not saying ditch your commitments no 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 of course not but you have to commit we have to commit to ourselves and when we commit to ourselves and we are the best that we can be for ourselves, we can then present our best version to everything and everyone, in which case everyone wins, okay? And I see a huge circle around this card, which to me represents 
you are in a huge ending of a cycle. Huge ending of a cycle. That was number two. Message number three. Ah, you are breaking old patterns and old commitments, and some of them are hard to break. For some of you, these are codependence type commitments where you or someone else is relying too heavily on you or, or you on them, which denotes lack of balance. Um, everyone understands what the idea of codependence is, codependent relationships. Um, they're not particularly healthy. And that's because it carries, those relationships carry a heavy burden. Okay, and one person or the other always carries the other, the heavier burden. It's just too much and it ends up breaking. So if you have any codependency challenges or issues, those might be worthwhile for you to look at at this time. Especially with the eclipses coming up, the moment you recognize them, you can then begin the process of letting it go and the energies will support you, but it will not happen by itself. Your, your, your recognition of it is absolutely of paramount importance. The other thing I want to say to you is don't blame yourself, but do hold yourself accountable. So don't blame yourself, but do hold yourself accountable. I'm not going to over explain that. I hope that means makes sense. We have unfinished symphony. Yes. You are stuck in an old pattern. And because you have not something, you have not resolved something with inside of you, it's going to be very difficult for you to resolve it in a situation. Again, this is commitment of, on your, in, uh, for yourself. In upright, this means that You are still are following the old story. In re reverse, to me, it represents that somehow you still need this story. Somehow your old story serves you. And I get a, I get a metaphor here. Somebody says, "I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person." I don't know why would somebody would say that, but. They're saying I'm a bad person. And it feels like being a bad person feeds them in some way. It gives them permission to do the things that they do that they are not necessarily proud of. So in order to stop doing these things, the person has to stop telling themselves that they're a bad person. So if they've done some bad things, perhaps it's time to forgive or perhaps it's time to forgive somebody and turn that thing around. Um, yeah, I don't know who this message is for. I don't think it's too many people, but um, I want to say this, but it's, it's, it's strange. I don't know who would think that, but this is a message for someone. Do you see yourself as a monster? Have you been told that you're a monster? Has someone called you some horrible names and they fundamentally eroded your self-confidence? They eroded your sense of uh, who you are and that then became your identity and that's how you show up to the world. I don't know who this message is for. It's very interesting. Um, 
it feels very much like somebody's confidence was eroded early on. And I mean, many people go through it. I mean, I get it. Um, so how does this, how would this feed you, for example? Well, for one, it might keep you in codependent relationships. It might keep you intoxicated. And I've noticed what I just said. Perhaps you're dealing with an addiction, which is a codependence. Perhaps you're trying to not remember what you heard. Uh, not remembering your truth doesn't make your truth go away. It's still there. It's still your vibration. And I feel like there's a whole lot of forgiveness that's going on here or needs to go on. Needs, right? Okay. I want to say you're not a bad person. You're not a bad person. And this is how I want to end this. I hope this was helpful. Of course, if you would like to work with me and my team, that information is down below. The webinars that are coming up, especially on the 18th of November, uh, it's down below. I look forward to seeing you there and I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I wish you best of luck until I see you again.